does on your careful manipulation. <laughs> We're just hoping, you know, the marijuana community comes with peaceful, good vibes and just ready to celebrate this free event. Now on Denver 7 News at 8 on Local 3, it is 420. And the world's largest pot festival returns to Denver in person for the first time since the pandemic. We're going 360 on how cannabis is evolving in hmm. Colorado. Plus, why Governor Polis is pushing the president to get COVID vaccines to younger kids faster. And four fires popped up in Boulder County yesterday. We're learning new details about a woman now facing charges for one of them. Yeah, it is serious right now. Do not start fires. Well, outside. and every yeah. time the wind blows, uh, yeah. we're worried about a fire sparking as mm -hmm. we uh, take a live look outside. A lot of sun out there. It will be warm, maybe a little bit cooler than yesterday, but there's still a fire danger, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And you're right, and it is a little cooler, but still above normal. And the red flag warnings that are popping up today are in effect until 7 o'clock for the northeastern plains, 8 o'clock down to the south. We're going to see winds gust upwards of around 20 to near 25 miles per hour. And it's still going to be pretty warm out there this morning. You're looking at 30s and 40s, but by 9 o'clock, we're going to be well into the 50s, 60 by about 11, and then we're hitting highs closer to 70 this afternoon. Not quite as toasty as the well near 80s that we saw yesterday, but it's still very warm for this time of year. Denver 70, Greeley 74, low 80s near Pueblo and La Junta, Trinidad this afternoon, a high of 83. 50s and 60s in the mountains. Now we picked up a little snow in the high country overnight. Now skies are going to start to clear out out west and it's going to stay dry through Friday. We're going to be about 10 to 20 degrees above normal here over the next three days. Rain and snow though this weekend. We're tracking a stronger cold front Saturday. Well, late Friday into Saturday and I'll show you what that does to our Super 7 day coming up. We have a new crash reported down to the southeast side of town on 225 on the southbound side going past Parker Road and it's been heavy in there anyway coming down from Iliff. So it's going to be added in a couple extra minutes. They said it was in the left lane. I haven't seen it yet as the camera as you take a look at it is looking to the north. So the car the crash is reported to the south of us. You see these folks getting over so that left side is blocked right now. Also that southbound side trying to get onto I-225 from Peoria is all backed up and from the drive times you're looking at about 15 to 20 minutes here. A lot of traffic getting down past University and Evans on the drive to the Denver Tech Center. The overall 225 drive about 25 minutes there. It's been real busy on I-70 both directions. If you hear of a crash near the Purina plant, not a big deal. Way over to the side. Still a lot of traffic on I-76 as well as I-25 into the city and still pretty busy on some of those sunshine routes as well. Well, this year will mark 10 years since Coloradans voted to legalize recreational marijuana. So this morning on 420, we're taking a 360 in-depth look at the marijuana industry here and how it's changed. Uh, Denver is trying to make the industry more equitable. We'll talk to a woman who's benefiting from that process. Plus, marijuana has brought in plenty of another type of green money to our state. That could be changing, though. We're diving into a new report showing sales haven't been as strong as they used to be. Meanwhile, Denver's big pot party is back in full this mm -hmm. year. Tens of thousands of people are expected at Civic Center Park today for the Mile High 420 Festival, but the event is causing some controversy at City Hall. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford is at City Park, and Jessica, this all started over a social media post. That's right, that post started out saying sub Denver rights, and it went on to say don't roll up without a ticket. Here's a look at that post. The city posted this message to Twitter and Facebook Monday. It appeared to promote the Mile High 420 Festival happening at Civic Center Park today. That's where we are right now. Some called it cringeworthy. The post, which has since been deleted, had the call to action of finding the stigma surrounding marijuana use. To give some context, using marijuana in public is still illegal in Colorado, so the city's confusing messaging did spark controversy on social media. We definitely um, realized pretty quickly that um, we were inadvertently stirring up some controversy from the city side that we did not intend to do. We intentionally do post things um, that may not sound governmenty, you know, in a traditional way. Um, but the intent of yesterday's post was really to um, start to um, acknowledge the obviously large event that's happening essentially right outside of our doorstep at Civic Center Park and um, to really leverage that opportunity to remind people that um, there are safe, responsible ways to enjoy 420. 
Denver police put out an alert overnight reminding people to not smoke at the pot festival. But in years past, they've had to look the other way because there has just been so much smoking going on. And you can see a cloud just rising in this time lapse you see here. Organizers do expect quite a crowd here. They're expecting between 30 to 50,000 people. And you can just take a look over my shoulder right there. You can see it's all set up and prepared to start at noon today. Uh, Lil John's gonna be here, as well as rapper Big Boy and uh, Talib Kweli, as well as TV host Montel Williams. Uh, there's also going to be uh, some food trucks here as well well and tickets are for free you can get them at eventbrite.com live in denver i'm jessica crawford denver 7. thank you jessica one of the festival's organizers is taking part in denver's push to create more diversity in the industry ashley chubin is chief operating officer for fly high cannabis delivery it operates in aurora and denver as a woman in the industry, you get to sit at the big boys table and that has been a really exciting part of it. I've been in the industry for gosh, going on eight years now. Um, and it's awesome to see that women do have a voice and a place in cannabis. I think, you know, men do a great job, but women grow things too. So <laughs> growing the business is awesome. And I would say for social equity, it's amazing that Denver, especially as one of the biggest cities, has come through saying, you know, we want to give a chance to minority. Yeah, last year, Denver reserved new marijuana business licenses for social equity applicants only until 2027. The state defines a social equity applicant as someone who has prior marijuana convictions or members of communities that were targeted by the war on drugs. While Colorado is selling more than $5 million in marijuana products each day, sales are actually dropping in February. The last month the state has records for sales were about $145 million for February. That is a big number, but it is down more than 20 million from February of last year. Sales have been falling actually every month but one over the last year, possibly because more states are legalizing marijuana. Well, it'll be warm, dry, and breezy again today. A dangerous mix for wildfires. Yeah, we had four spark in Boulder County alone mm. yesterday. We mapped out where those were all in the span of a few hours. One was south of the city off Flagstaff Road, which was no more than a quarter acre. Fortunately, a tree ignited near Lyons, where firefighters were still mopping up the 37E fire that prompted evacuations last Friday. There was a grass fire on Oxford Road that burned a shed. It was accidentally started by a contractor working in the area. And the sheriff's office says a woman will be charged in connection with the fourth fire that prompted evacuations in a neighborhood in Gun Barrel. Denver 7's Veronica Costa has more after first responders went door to door to get people out because that fire came right up to their yards. We know the woman linked to the Tally Ho fire lives in this area and those charges, they're still pending. But as the sun starts coming up, we're getting a better look at what's left of the fire, some charred grassland and just how close it got to some of these neighboring homes in this area. This Air Tracker 7 video shows you just that, just how close those flames got to the houses. It's because of that that those first responders had to go door to door, warning everyone in this neighborhood to leave as soon as they could. But it wasn't all fire crews. The Daily Camera reported families in this neighborhood actually stepped up to help in any way they could. Some turned on sprinklers to wet down potential fuel as fire got closer and closer to their front doors. Others hooked up their garden hoses and tried their hand at wetting down the flames. The fire itself grew to just under 10 acres in size. The good news is fire crews got a handle on it pretty quickly. They were able to identify that origin as well as that cause. County officials say cost of damage that's estimated to be between five and $10,000. And the other piece of good news this morning is there were no injuries reported and no structures lost in the fire either. In Boulder County, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. The group tasked with monitoring changes for the Aurora Police and Fire Departments is hearing from the public for the first time. IntegraSure held a town hall last night where people could comment and ask questions in person or virtually. It was clear a lot of people in attendance at that meeting want change. You can get more information about getting involved at thedenverchannel.com. 
Barry Morphew is a free man for now. A judge granted prosecutors request to dismiss the murder charges against him without prejudice, which means Morphew could be charged again. He was charged in the murder of his wife, Suzanne, back in 2020. Her body has never been found. Tuesday, prosecutors said they think they know where her body is and that it's under about five feet of snow and they need more time to find it. Today, we are remembering the lives lost on one of the darkest days in our state's history. It has been 23 years now since the Columbine High School shooting. 12 students and a teacher were killed on April 20th, 1999. Classes will be canceled today, and the community has committed to paying respect to those lost by making mm -hmm. every April 20th a day of service, and it's encouraging others to join in. Uh, once you're a rebel, you're a rebel for life, and I think that this is such a clear depiction of of what that means to be a rebel um, in service and in action and in just the breadth of of impact that we're able to have engage in acts of kindness in acts of love in acts of service towards others so that when we remember our 13 we do it in a way where we are putting kindness and goodness out into the world yeah last year there were 60 projects in six states and 10 countries you can learn more and get involved on the website columbineserves.org Gearing up for a fight, what it would take for the Department of Justice to file an appeal against the canceled mask mandate. And one of the most beautiful sites in our state was devastated by mudslides last summer. We have an update now on when you may be able to visit Hanging Lake again.